to Christmas Story Time. We're so glad you're here with us. We're coming to you from the Scott County Public Library in Georgetown, Kentucky. I'm Miss Mary Lou. I'm Miss Kelly. And we're going to share some poems, some songs, and some, of course, some Christmas books with you today. Oh, yes. So glad that you could join us. And we're going to start off with this one. Yes. See, see the, the snowflakes, snowflakes falling. See, see the, the candles, candles glow. See the wreaths upon the door. It's Christmas time, you know. So do that again, you do it with us. <laughs> see the snowflakes falling, see the candles glow, see the wreaths upon the door. It's Christmas time, we know. Okay, we're gonna do a song now. Yeah. And we're gonna use our jingle bells with this song. If you have um, some jingle bells at home, that'd be great. You can get that and, and use that with this little song that we're gonna sing. Yeah. It's pretty easy. It is. All right, you ready? Yep. Ring, ring, ring the bells, ring them loud and clear to tell the children everywhere that Christmas time is here. Clap, clap, clap your hands, clap them loud and clear to tell the children everywhere that Christmas time is here. Feet now, stomp, stomp, stomp your feet, stomp them loud and clear to tell the children everywhere that Christmas time is here. Shout, shout, shout your voice, shout it loud and clear to tell the children everywhere that Christmas time is here. Well, that was good. We didn't practice that. <laughs> got that all right. All right. I'm going to read a book to you now. And the book that I'm going to read is called Bear Stays Up. And this book was written by Karma Wilson and illustrated by Jane Chapman. And it was, uh, this book is published by Margaret McElderry, which is an imprint of Simon & Schuster. And they've given us permission to read this book to you today. Bear Stays Up for Christmas. The day before Christmas, snuggle on his floor, Bear sleeps soundly with a great big snore. Dear Bear, get up, Mouse shouts in his ear. We won't let you sleep through Christmas this year. His friends are all there, gathered in his lair, and the bear wakes up. He stands with a stretch and a great big sigh. I hope I can make it. I do want to try. Don't worry, squeaks Mouse. Hare says, it's all right. We'll keep you busy all day and night. He tries to lie down, but his friends all frown. So the bear stays up. Come on, says Badger, time to follow me. In Pine Grove Glen, there's a fine Christmas tree. So they stomp through the woods and they tromp down the track. They hoist up the tree onto Bear's big back. He plods very slow as they trudge through the snow, but Bear stays up. Back at the cave, Gopher brews mint tea, and Mole pops corn to string upon the tree. Raven and Wren make a fresh fruit cake. The friends do their best to keep Bear awake. His shoulders start to stoop, and his eyelids droop. But the bear stays up. They hang up their stockings by warm firelight and hum Christmas songs like, Oh, Holy Night. They cuddle and sing as they wait for the sun. But soon, all the voices fade except just one. A bright star glows while his good friends doze but the bear stays up. Bear giggles and grins, he works and he raps, he bustles and bakes while everyone naps. He piles up presents under the tree, but who's at the doorway? Bear doesn't see. He toils all night until the sun rises, making his friends their Christmas surprises. And just before dawn, he lets out a yawn but he still stays up. When Christmas arrives so lovely and 
white. Bear's friends awake to a glorious sight. Presents and goodies are piled up tall. I stayed up, says Bear, just to share it with you all. His friends shout with glee. Bear lies by the tree, but he still stays up. Wren flies to the stockings and tweets out a cheer. Besides Bear's presence, Santa was here. When all gifts are opened, there's one last surprise. Badger shows Bear a quilt, just Bear's size. Bear snuggles up tight and mutters, good night. And then Bear falls asleep. His friends tidy up and slip from the lair. They whisper, sweet dreams, Merry Christmas, dear bear. All right. So you know who this is? This is a reindeer, and his name is Rudolph. Rudolph. But he's missing something. Mm. Can you tell? No nose on Rudolph. Mm -hmm. Rudolph, Rudolph, what will you do? You can't guide Santa's sleigh if your nose is blue. Rudolph, Rudolph, you're such a silly fellow. Who will know it's you if your nose is yellow? Whoop. Oops. Are we moving our table here? Yep. Yeah, We're right. good. Maybe we should be locking here. Lock it. There, that won't happen again. All right. So, Rudolph, Rudolph, your way cannot be seen through the wintry weather if your nose is green. Oh, my gosh. I like that one. All right. Rudolph, Rudolph, Santa gave a wink. But what would he say if your nose was pink? All right. Ah. Rudolph, Rudolph, it's time to fly at night, but you can't get through the snow if your nose is white. Rudolph, Rudolph, it's time to go to town, but you can't help Santa if your nose is brown. I guess that's what most of your noses are, they're brown. Mm. All right, Santa has his sack. Rudolph, Rudolph, Santa has his sack, but you're not ready. If your nose is black, black. All right, what color have we not seen yet on Rudolph's nose? Mm -hmm. Rudolph, Rudolph, the children are all in bed, but now you can go because your nose is red. Yay. There it is. Yay, Rudolph. That was much better. Oh, yes. All right, so I think it's, oh, Miss Kelly has a book. Too. I do have a book. All right. This is Christmas 410 by Catherine Falwell. And thank you to Clarion, which is the imprint of Houghton Mifflin Books, for allowing us to read this. One star for the top of the Christmas tree. Two angels with wings. Three royal kings. Four children play in harmony. Five snuggle up near, six stories to hear. Seven tasty candy canes. Eight reindeer that fly, nine ribbons to tie. Ten hands string the popcorn chains. One wreath welcomes guests to the door. Two will make, three will bake. Four will taste and ask for more. That's what I do when we make cookies. <laughs> Five baskets to pack, six presents to stack. Seven bright candles standing tall. Eight voices will sing and nine silver bells will ring. Ten joyful folks wish peace for all. 
It is the nicest. So I think it, at Thanksgiving we visited that family and we also visited yes. there at Thanksgiving. We have a little continuity here. Oh. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I am wondering if you have your jingle bells or some a scarf or a sock or a towel to wave around because we're going to dance a little bit. Yeah. We're going to, since we've seen Rudolph, we're going to do Rudolph the Red right, right, right here. And this edition is from Kids Bob, who have given us permission to use their music. Thank you, Kids Bob. All right. Get ready to dance. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen. Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? because it's just delightful. Uh, this is Santa Baby by Jonathan Stutzman and illustrated by Heather Fox. And I'm gonna put my mask on and get a little closer to Kelly because I get to do sound effects for this book. Uh-huh. This is, mm, I love this book. There were only four days until Christmas and Santa Claus was feeling old. Santa was old, of course, he had been Santa for hundreds and hundreds of years. But this year, his beard seemed whiter, his wrinkles more wrinkly, his belly less jolly and more jelly. <laughs> Every year it was the same, wrangling the reindeer, climbing rooftops and chimneys, lugging and reaching and bending and stooping to deliver all those presents. And it had taken a toll on Santa. Ho, ho, ow. For the first time in centuries, Santa Claus did not feel the Christmas spirit. 
He felt only the ache of his body. Santa tried to be jolly, but holiday festivities only made his feet, knees, back, ears, face, and fingers hurt. Santa was sour and sore, but all the children in the entire world were counting on him. So he did something he had never done before. He called upon the magic of Christmas and made a wish. Make me young again! And younger he grew. And younger. And just right. And too young. <laughs> Whatever. Until Santa was the baby. Mama, Mama. Santa baby tried to calm the elves. He explained what happened, then laid out an easy three-step plan for how to change himself back to normal. But all the elves heard was <laughs> Christmas was in serious trouble. There were three days until Christmas, and the elves decided to run Santa Baby through some tests to see which Santa skills he still had. They started with the ones essential to a successful Christmas. Driving the sleigh, going up and down chimneys, delivering gifts. It was worse than the elves had imagined. Much, much worse. No! So they tried something easier. They gave Santa Baby his list to check. But instead of checking it, he chewed his no, list. No, 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 no. He chewed it twice. No, 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 no. The elves did not think this was very nice. Actually, they found it quite naughty. Finally, the elves tried the easiest test they could think of. Repeat after me. Ho, ho, ho. A goop. Da, da, da. Santa Baby did not pass. There were two days till Christmas, and the elves were desperate. If they were to save Christmas, Santa Baby had to grow up and fast. Vegetables, they thought. That would help him grow. Eat your num-nums. No. But Santa Baby did not want to eat his vegetables. The only num-nums Santa Baby wanted were cookies. Mm. But what about milk? Santa Baby loved milk, but the only thing that grew was his diaper. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Christmas was doomed. It was Christmas Eve, and all the elves' ideas had failed. Whispers swirled through the North Pole that Christmas would have to be canceled. Santa Baby considered giving up, but then he thought about all the children who would wake up the next morning with empty stockings and no presents under their trees. So Santa Baby stood up and put on his big boy cap. He knew he had to try. Santa! He gathered the elves and laid out another plan. He spoke slower this time, with great passion, and used hand-drawn diagrams for the visual learners. Goo, goo, ga, ga, ga. And then, concentrating his very, very hardest, Santa Baby babbled the three little words he knew would inspire the elves. Ho, ho, ho. Cheers erupted across the North Pole. With renewed hope, the elves sprang into action. As the clock struck midnight, the elves loaded the final gifts onto the sleigh and buckled Santa Baby into his safety-approved sleigh seat. Off like a flash, the sleigh shot into the night. From house to house they dashed, the presents were placed, the stockings were stuffed, and every num-num was eaten. Everything was going so well, Santa Baby felt like Santa again. But then Santa Baby stumbled and tumbled and hurried down the chimney in fright. Santa Baby bumped his bottom and began to cry. He cried with the fury of a thousand carolers. Well, when Santa Baby opened his eyes, a girl was there. And in her arms, she held a gift that had been given on her first Christmas. A gift she cherished more than anything. A gift she gave to Santa Baby. In the soft twinkle of tree light, in the arms of a kind child, Santa Baby felt the beauty and wonder of Christmas again. 
as if for the first time. And before he knew it, whoop, whoop, whoop. Santa was Santa again. Merry, old, achy Santa. His beard was white, his wrinkles wrinkly, his belly jelly, but jolly. Santa, it's you! In all the Christmases through all the centuries he had lived, Santa had never felt more full of life. And as he flew off into the frosted night, Santa made another wish, not for himself, but for everyone. No matter how young you are or how old you feel, may you experience the wonder of Christmas as if for the first time, again and again and again. Isn't that a great book? I love that. Yes. All right. Shall we pokey? I think we shall pokey. All right. So get your antlers out, right? Yeah. Get them out. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Kelly's got real antlers. I just have to use my hands. Okay. We'll do both. So it's like this. You put, you put your antlers in, you put your antlers out, you put your antlers in, and you shake them all about. You do the reindeer pokey, and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your hooves in, you put your hooves out, you put your hooves in, and you shake them all about. You do the reindeer pokey, and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your fluffy tail in, you put your fluffy tail out, you put your fluffy tail in, and you shake it all about. You do the reindeer pokey, and you turn yourself around, and that's what it's all about. You put your red nose in, you take your red nose out, you put your red nose in, and you shake it all about. You do the reindeer pokey, and you turn yourself around, and that's what it's all about. Woo! Yeah! All right. Let's see what we have to do next. Ah, oh, oh, we have a little song. Santa. It goes like this. Santa's coming, Santa's coming. Yes, he is, yes, he is. Here his bells are ringing, here his bells are ringing. Ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong. Santa's coming, Santa's coming. Yes, he is, yes, he is. Hear him laughing, hear him laughing. Ho, 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 ho. Huh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do one more song and then one more book. Yes. All right. We're going to do Walking Around the Christmas Tree. Are you ready? You got your bells again? Or are you just ready to kind of rock and roll here? This is a a a a a a a here. Yeah. 
Kids Pop for giving us permission to use their music. So the last book that we are going to read is The Night Before Christmas, which is a famous old poem that was written, oh, I think, over 200 years ago by Clement C. Moore. This is a new, um, a newly illustrated version of it. Uh, it's illustrated by Lauren Long, who is actually from Lexington. He lives in Ohio now. Uh, but this, this has just, I love, this is like, we must have 20 versions of uh, The Night Before Christmas, different illustrators. This is my favorite. It's really beautiful. The Night Before Christmas, and this was uh, published uh, by Harper Publishing, which is an imprint of Harper Collins, and they've given us permission to read this book to you. The Night Before Christmas by Clement Seymour and illustrated by Lauren Long. Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. Well, no, the children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled in for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering I should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his coursers they came and when he whistled and shouted and called them by name, now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his sack. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, and his nose was like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of his pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and, he, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know that I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings and then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger on the side of his nose, giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, 
and to all a good night. Kelly and I are going to sign off by singing a Merry Christmas song to you, but first we want to thank you for joining us. We want to thank Min Young Bowling for being so kind as to come yes. and, and uh, film this for us. Always our great help and support. And we wish you all the, the very best of holidays and a Happy New Year, and we hope that we'll be seeing you in the near future. Yes. You ready? Yes. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Glad tidings we bring to you and your kin. Glad tidings of Christmas and a Happy New Year.